The Facebook Ads Event Setup tool is the easiest way to start implementing standard events on your site after your pixel has been implemented. I say this is the easiest way because you don't need to learn how to code. You can do it all within this tool. So in this video, we're going to show you where this tool lives because it's kind of buried within the settings. We're also going to cover which industries can use this tool because there are a good amount of industries that aren't allowed to use it. So we'll definitely cover that one. Then we'll go through the setup of how you can actually go in, create these events, and then test them within Events Manager before pushing anything live. Before we hop into Facebook Business Manager, I want to talk about a few things you should know before using the event setup tool. The first thing is that you need to make sure that the website you are using has the Facebook pixel on it. The event setup tool lives in events manager where your pixel is and you have to select the pixel when using this tool. So if it's not on the website, there's no point even running through the setup tool because it's attached to the pixel. The second thing is that you must have admin permissions on that website's pixel. It's another setting within events manager. Having just an admin permission to the ad account won't do. Next, in order to use this tool, you have to turn off all your ad blockers. Once you're done using it, you can always turn them back on within your browser, but we need them off for this tool. And last, your business cannot be in a regulated vertical. And Facebook describes these businesses as investment banking, brokerage, insurance, financial services, retail, credit unions, commercial banking, credit in general, financing, mortgages, pharmaceutical, and then health. So if your account is in one of these industries, you can still set up events manually, you just cannot use the event setup tool. So now that we know this, let's hop into Facebook Business Manager. The event setup tool lives in Events Manager. So wherever you are within the Business Manager account, head on over to the menu on the left hand side. I'm in Events Manager quite often, so it's going to be in my shortcuts, but you will also see it in the Manage Business section. So let's head into Events Manager. Your Facebook account could have multiple pixels off to the side, but you need to choose the one where you want to use the event tool. And then if I take my mouse and go directly to the right, I want to click on settings. When I scroll down, we see the event setup section, and then we can click on the open event setup tool. Next, enter in the website, and hopefully you understand this already, but the website we're entering is the website that contains the pixel we are in right now. And that's why the very first thing I said in this video after the intro is that you need to make sure the website has your Facebook pixel on it. So now let's open the website. And when they take us to the site, we see the Facebook event setup tool pop up. Off the bat, there are two different types of events that we can create tracking specific button clicks or tracking a URL. We're going to cover each one, so let's start with a new button. If I click on this option, we see the pop-up goes away. And there are certain elements here that Facebook highlights that we can choose to use for the specific event. You see the notification on the bottom, but I can keep scrolling and I can see other options for me to choose for this specific event. Clearly the YouTube channel is important to us, so I'm going to choose this link right here as the element I want to track. Now that I have that option highlighted, we see the pop-up come back with the next step. So now we get to choose the event type we would actually like to track. Think of this like the event category. So if I scroll down, the best option for me will be view content because I'm sending people to view my content on the YouTube channel. And then you can decide if this specific event has a value to it. If it does, you can choose the value on the page and assign the currency. But since I'm just sending people to my YouTube channel, this particular example does not. Another optional step is to add a content ID and content type. So you can choose a specific content ID for the page. This website example won't be the best one, but if you're showcasing a few products, you want to click certain elements on those products, you can choose a specific SKU, you can change it to a group of products, and for the auto industry, you can choose a specific vehicle. But again, for my website, I'm not going to include anything specific. And after I confirmed it, we can click down on this arrow, and I've just created a view content event that will fire off every time someone clicks the button where the text is Paid Media Pro's YouTube channel. If there's anything that needs to be updated, I can click on the pencil to edit this event. And there we see it scrolls down specifically. It's got the green check mark, so I know it's working. There's nothing I need to change, so I can just cancel. The other type of event would be tracking a URL. Just like the button click event, you want to choose what type of event you would want to track. And some of the categories will be easier from the URL side. If your website does have e-commerce, I can easily go choose the add to cart option and maybe change the URL to be contains and then choose cart. You see the warning here that it must match a portion of this URL. I cannot replicate that because the Pay Media Pros website is not an e-commerce site. But you would want to go to the actual cart page just so you're tracking the event where it's actually going to take place. This type of setup could be really important for any of your specific confirmation URLs. If someone fills out a form, 
you're sending them to a thank you page, you can easily set that up with the event setup tool. Again, you'd want to make sure you're choosing the right event type. Let's say contact. We do have a form on our website. There it is. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to fill out a fake entry just so we can get to the confirmation page. Now I know I have the top of my browser cut off so you can't see our confirmation URL, but I'm going to go back, track another URL. I'm going to switch this specific event back to the contact. That was the option I had on the previous screen. And in my case, I don't want URL equals. Just with the easy form that we have on our website, it adds a bunch of parameters and IDs at the end of it. So it's not going to be the exact URL every time. That would be a problem. So I want to change it to URL contains. And in my case, I'm including contact form sent because I know this particular string will always be in the URL once this form is filled. Your website could just have slash thank you slash purchase complete. Maybe you want to create an event for all different types of blog visits. Just head to the main blog page and then you'll be able to do that. So URL based type of events are pretty easy to set up. If I click confirm, it only stayed up for a little bit, but in the lower right hand corner, it was telling me that this event is complete. And you can keep hopping to multiple different pages of your site, setting up various events. But if we're good, we can click Finish Setup. We get one last chance to review everything that we set up just within this session. And if everything looks good, we can click Finish. Yeah, I'm not doing that. We're going to skip this. And now we're sent back to the Events Manager. Now to make sure our events are working, we can head back up to this pixel navigation and go over to the left to Test Events. If we scroll down a little bit more, our website is already in there. So let's open this button again and remember the two events that we set up. First was the click interaction for this particular link. So I'm going to click on this. It did send me to the YouTube channel. That's the function of the event, but now I want to go back. The second event was the form. So let's go over to the form page again. I'm going to fill out a fake one one more time, submit it so we can get to the confirmation page again. Once more, you cannot see the URL, but I know I'm on the completion page. So then we can head back to events manager and see if these events went through. Facebook says the events should appear within 30 seconds after the interaction if they are firing correctly. So if we look to this setup method column, we see there was the contact event because the setup method was the event setup tool. It fired today pretty much within the minute that I actually tested the event on the website. And then the view content event, that was the click that was going to the YouTube channel. And we can see it was just less than a minute earlier than when I tested out the form. So now I have confirmation that these two events are working properly. If I want to use these events with Facebook's new aggregated events measurement, we can head back to overview, click down into aggregated event measurement, configure my web events because I am an admin on this pixel. I need to choose the approved domain for this pixel. I have the other one blurred out because I am attached as an admin on a different website. Click manage events. Understand this will pause my ads for a while, but this is a dummy account, so I don't have to worry about that. And then I can look at adding the new events I just created with the setup tool. First, I had to confirm my pixel. And there I chose the contact event that we just created. So I could save it and then I could start using this event for conversion optimization. I'm not going to go through a ton about aggregated event measurement because I recently just recorded a video on this new setup. So you can see with the button click and the URL options, the event setup tool can be pretty convenient for basic events. If you have a clean URL structure, I'd rather use the setup tool than trying to create a specific event within Tag Manager and having it pushed back into Facebook. But you probably noticed when I was doing the button click events that not everything on my page was highlighted. I couldn't choose like a video view event or certain link clicks that went away from my website. And you probably noticed that not all buttons were highlighted. So you may have to use a different tool like Tag Manager to get specific events you may want recorded within Facebook Business Manager. But if you have admin access to a specific pixel, it's worth checking out because it may save you a lot of time in the future. But if you have any specific questions on the Facebook event setup tool, the test events tool, or possibly aggregated events measurement, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.